here we are with the first episode of Why Is Your Podcast on a Dead Girl's Phone. My name is Niles, and I have been obsessed with How to Get Away with Murder ever since 2014 when the pilot episode aired. And yeah, every season, every episode, every... Yeah, I've been there, and I wanted to start this podcast because I miss the show so, so much. And yeah, it's almost already been a year since the series finale, and I have missed it every single day. (laughs) And yeah, so I wanted to start this podcast to keep the excitement up for the show. Um, Interview cast members, directors, writers, hopefully Pete himself, the creator, will come on at some point and spill all the secrets. But yeah, I just wanted to keep the excitement for the show up, and I hope you guys are excited and look forward to every single episode when I figure out a schedule. And yeah, the first episode we have Conrad Ricamora, Oliver himself. I am so excited for this interview and I hope you guys enjoy it. If you want to watch the interview, it is on the YouTube channel, Why Is Your Podcast on a Dead Girl's Phone? Or if you're listening on Spotify and you just wanna listen to the audio, it is on Spotify and yeah Conrad is our first guest I have nine more people already lined up that have agreed to come on so it is going to be fun and exciting and yeah we're gonna keep the show alive because I miss it (laughs) but yeah I hope you guys enjoy the first episode with Conrad and yeah here we go we're here (laughs) oh my god how are you though first off I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm so- How are you? Where, where are you? I'm in my bedroom. Amazing. I love all of the shrines. Oh, yeah. With the Operation yes. Bonfire board. I know. Oh, my God. It feel like, feels like a million years ago at this point. It's almost <laughs> been a year since the finale, and I cannot yeah. believe it. Yeah. <laughs> It has, but that feels, it's crazy because, you know, we started shooting, we stopped shooting right before the pandemic started and February, yeah. yeah, February, like seventh or ninth was the rap party. And then the pandemic hit and just like that just, it just feels like 10 years have passed <laughs> since my the pandemic. <laughs> oh my God, me too. Like waking up. So I kind of wanted to start off with the pandemic and all the filming and stuff for the resident yeah. you're doing and yeah. like the process and the quarantine. And- yeah, well, I mean, we get, so we get tested three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, and uh, the quarantining is, you know, it's not really, we, we, wear our masks we show up to set um everything is different on set we you wear your mask until they say uh rolling and then you take your mask off and then a pa has a plastic bag uh that for for each actor and you throw it in your personal plastic bag and then you and you immediately start acting <laughs> which is yeah it's really it, it took a while to get used to because all of a sudden it was like oh throw that off and then you all you're right into character oh my um God. yeah it uh, makes it easier for our it's like a medical show so yeah like mask thing and right we're in surgery a lot and all of that so that's not it's not too i mean if, if we were doing murder right now that would be really really difficult i, think. I do want to see everyone on or the K five with a mask and oh my gosh yeah everyone. get them personalized just sort of like our our little slogans smile or go to jail and Connor smile or go to jail there's a penis on a dead girl cell phone they should make those ABC should yeah that's true uh, uh, yeah. yeah so so it's 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 changed a little bit I'm so so uh, grateful to be working at all right now because I have so many friends that are in theater that mm. it's just completely shut down so mean girls is gone and oh. mean girls is yeah they decided to close during the pandemic beetlejuice uh <laughs> i think now they were gonna close anyway but i think that they were gonna reopen in another theater 
um, but they just decided to close. Um, hopefully they'll come back, but yeah. Uh, so it's been, it's been mm. tough, but uh, yeah. I, so I feel really grateful to be working. Yeah, my work's been really different too since we went back. Um, I work at an elementary school. Oh my gosh. So all the 600 kids and um, I got my first shot so far, but I haven't oh, gotten the second yeah. one yet. The 25th, I get it. Okay. But yeah, my work's been, they did like a hybrid model first. They only had like certain kids like the alphabet their last name come yeah certain days of the week and so we only had like 200 300 but now it's like full yeah they oh, wow. new kids back and <sighs> that's it's been... almost been great so. <laughs> yeah i'm sure that's been crazy i wonder what that noise do you hear that noise no oh maybe it's <laughs> i swear it's this hotel. <laughs> How long have you been filming? Uh, I've been here this, so I was, I came in the fall to shoot uh, two episodes and then uh, I got here January 1st and I have been here ever since. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, it's a long time to be in a hotel. Uh, no I, Wilbur, nothing. No, Wilbur's here. I brought oh, him. Oh, is he? Oh yeah. my! He's sleeping right now, so I don't want to wake him up. Oh. <laughs> um, what was the biggest um difference between or like um between Oliver and Jake, like switching a hacking computer for a doctor's coat? Like, what was the big? I you prepare. I, I well, one of my good friends is a doctor, and he specifically told me that surgeons are like cowboys oh. <laughs> and uh they are i guess he was just like they're a little bit more cocky although jake is for a surgeon is on the sweeter side uh but he's still pretty cocky and confident which oliver had struggled with all six seasons <laughs> with confidence um so uh it's nice to 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 play a different side of myself and jake who is so confident in what he's doing uh oliver was good at what he did but he still had a, a trouble expressing that confidence which jake doesn't have as much trouble expressing that confidence i think that's the biggest difference and probably between. less stress for jake not running around covering up <laughs> yeah i have to tell you like looking back on those six years it really did the anxiety of playing in that world showing it knowing that like you know because i of course in my conscious brain know that it's like oh this is fake it's pretend but like looking back like that anxiety of living in that world really did seep into my skin and bones like oh. the uh, uh, living in that how to get away with murder zone of anxiety all the time like it it, it was real uh and you know yeah <laughs> On but, side. yeah yeah i mean it which is probably why it, what it made it so thrilling to watch but to sh to shoot that for you know seven months seven eight months out of the year I didn't realize how taxing it was on um, psychologically. <laughs> oh, us too, like waiting week to week with those cliffhangers and <laughs> the winter finales. And... I know. And then you'd have to wait for another like two months for it to pick back oh, up. Oh my God, the worst. Um, mm. How did you first hear about um, the role for the pilot? And yeah, no, so I first, you know, I have an agent who sends me out on auditions uh, and uh, that is, I first went in for Wes, which is so crazy um, uh, and didn't get that. And then they, so that was, that was in December, um, which I'm so grateful because Alfie was so great and that I can't imagine anyone else playing that part. Uh, and then in January and middle end of January, they were like, so you remember that show you auditioned for? Well, there, they want to, there's a, there's a guest star 
that's just going to be in the pilot. Uh, and so I was like, yeah, I'll audition for it and went in and just put one audition on tape with the casting director, which, and then they hired me from that, that tape circulated through back to Pete. And then I guess through ABC and Shondaland, because so many people have to sign off on you uh, for a network when you go through like all these executives and networks. Just Shonda, uh, you know? Just yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so I didn't, and then I, I didn't have to audition again, which is incredible because when you audition for a series regular part, you usually have to go through like five or six auditions and it's a nightmare. It's so, uh, like, uh, anxiety, anxiety exhausting. Yeah. Um, and kind of terrifying because you're going into these rooms with exec, like, 10 plus executives like behind a table and then you're like, supposed to act like Oliver which I did I, I didn't have to do any of that which was so I'm so thankful for and then they made me a series regular just off of my work on the show mm. so yeah how did, how did that feel like at the start of season three um knowing that Pete and all the fans and stuff wanted more Oliver and it was so so great like to know that Oliver was received like in such a great way and also personally that my work was valued uh, as an actor that what I was doing was translating on screen and um, connecting with people um, so yeah that felt great it also felt great financially because struggling struggling artist life is was really taking its toll <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> so yeah it was really nice and then um kind of going backwards to the season one finale with the uh hiv positive yeah. and all that um did you have talks with pete beforehand or no just, it, like, was, let you read the it was just something that yeah no he knew that he wanted to have because he saw the landscape of television and that it wasn't being talked about anymore. Um, you know, so many uh, of the advancements in medicine are allowing people with HIV and AIDS to live healthy lives, but it still exists. Yeah. So he was wanting to show that and be like, you know, this isn't, this, this hasn't disappeared. It is different. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's different than it used to be, but uh, it's still a part of our world. And he felt that that was important. And I'm so glad that he did because when I was able to portray that on throughout the next couple of seasons, so many people reached out to me like to say that it made them feel less alone. Uh, it made them uh, feel more confident that they could relate to somebody else, even if it was on screen yeah that would be a lot to take in with all the messages and but worth yeah. it like at the end like yeah it's it's, in, it's insane to think that like you know we, we do this work on our sound stages and then it just permeates the world in a way that we don't we don't really get to see until those letters start coming in and social media that yeah and those are those letters are always a fraction of the people that uh, we've reached and, and touched by represent, representing them on screen. Okay, I don't want to ask all the murder questions <laughs> right off. No, you can. Yeah. I've only <laughs> interviewed one other time, and it was at the NBC studio tour in New York. Oh. They have like a giant room, and it has all the cameras, and you were like a big group. and. Oh, yeah. I got picked to do the interview, and I had to interview this other random guy that was in the group. And, oh, awesome. But I How think did I'm that feel? It was, no. <laughs> and I, had to, like, kept, I had to keep up with the teleprompter, and yeah. now I'm just reading all my post-it notes. Was it, was it, was it just like, I, I often wonder about, because one of my favorite shows of all time is 30 Rock, and, that you know, they it yeah. takes place in that building, and yeah. uh, Kenneth the Page, like, sometimes does tours like that and I wonder if it's like that <laughs> it was really it was a really good tour we are before that me and my best friend Sarah you met her 
in New York, in New York, yeah. When we first met, um, she w- was on. We were on Kathy Lee and Hoda, oh. and we, w- she won like a sports question, so we won like a gift card, so we used that to go on the tour. So it was fun, yeah. But I think I'm doing better this time. Oh <laughs> yeah. So. But and I yeah no you're doing great and I, it's so great to be talking to you because. Of, Oh, I forgot to mute my computer. Sorry. Um, uh, it's so great to be talking to you because you are, without a doubt, how to get away with murder is bigger. I had my trouble. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you said yes, but I was I I had a feeling you would. But. Yeah. No, I'm so excited. I hope other. I do have a good lineup. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. I mean, I I think that you uh, would be have been a great addition to uh our writing team here because i'm sure you thought about it so much oh yeah i have a tegan spinoff i'm working on but (laughs) i don't know how to write scripts yeah yeah no it's i mean i'm right there with you i'm writing (laughs) learning how to put everything in the script form it's hard yeah but i had a feeling pete was leaving these breadcrumbs for tegan so yeah i Put them all together and oh good I mean, yeah, and amira has just given uh, birth and asia and, is pregnant and asia uh, oh my gosh uh, that post was uh, i know really heartbreaking but so brave of her to like share her journey asia had or um amira had a girl right I oh yeah, yeah. no i had because it's so funny because i'll every now and then just go on social media but i i tend to I don't know the, the the I've gone through a little bit of a depression with the pandemic uh not being able to hang out with friends uh in person is really big and a lot of times social media because I can't be in the presence of my friends seeing them on a screen actually has the a reverse effect of making Makes me more sense. depressed because I want to reach out and hang out and then I can't and then I get depressed <laughs> turn off the phone yeah that would yeah. be and they're across the country or mm-hmm. in New York or yeah um, where are we at on my post-it notes <laughs> um, sorry I got you all mixed up no, I, uh, think, sorry. You come, you, uh, <laughs> I got you on a tangent but we're doing great thank you thank you oh, I did that one <laughs> Oh, I do had a I had a fun fan question from Instagram. Oh, great! Kind of going back to murder. Um, from who's this from Ace Laces? Um, how did you? Th- oh my God, I'm done. How do you think Oliver would have handled the murder night from, like the original Sam murder? How do you if he was in that moment? How do you think that would have? Well, I think that he probably would not have. Uh, covered it up I think he would have <laughs> freaked out and gone to the police immediately right when it, that campus cop showed up probably he would have yeah yeah uh it was through his relationship with Connor that allowed him to explore more of his dark side and to you know I think it was so interesting with with our show to see how our justice system we showed how it doesn't you know some sometimes we went on sensational journeys with our storylines but then other times we showed how our justice system doesn't work and how it's broken in different ways um and the i don't think oliver at the beginning of the show knew much about that but through his work and his relationship with connor and his relationship then with the k5 and annalise he started to see how you know sometimes you got to be a little squiggly in the justice system for better or worse to get it done, um, yeah. yeah so i but yeah definitely in season one he would have freaked out and called the police immediately <laughs> oh man oh, i thought that was a fun question to pitch yeah. to oliver in that room where oh man oh yeah no and they developed him really uh in a really great way over the the, the seasons to you know slowly start you know having more confidence to 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 take more risks and quitting his job quitting his job getting more involved in crime (laughs) (laughs) just destroying evidence of 
Oh no, my god! Terrible. Ooh, that's a fun. Um, do you have a favorite um winter finale? Oh. If Oliver is in it, or um, the first. Yeah, the I really, I really liked the um, you know, the first time Oliver saw a dead body. Oh, Simon, um, yeah. Yeah. I love season four so. Much. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. I think for personally for his care his own character development, uh, and then also like. Now I'm thinking back to season three. It's so hard uh, to, to remember all of them. But season three, when he started fully understanding everything that had gone on oh, in the previous season. The and- yeah. Yeah. And uh, he was kind of on that precipice of, decide, do I tell the police or do I involve myself further? with this group of people um Connor, and, yeah yeah and i liked that uh i liked living on that edge as as an actor uh and playing that kind of like you know where he didn't know you didn't know which way he was gonna go yeah i feel like i had a feeling oliver would get entangled up when he deleted the stanford uh acceptance and yeah kept connor there and <laughs> yeah yeah that was his first time like doing something totally selfish <laughs> <laughs> there should have been like a what if episode like um if connor moved away to go to stanford or if yeah. and the baby never died in the car crash for frank you know and yeah that would yeah been cool. that would have been really cool to see their lives like I don't even know if they like can't guarantee that Oliver and Connor would have stayed together if if they'd gone off and moved to Stanford and who knows. Yeah. yeah. It's been interesting to see. I did want to go back to you touched on season three with the under the sheet, and I've always wanted to ask one of you what it was like when you guys found out that it was gonna be Alfred uh, under the sheet and it was awful. Oh my god. It was really awful just because uh you know our show is so dark and Alfie is just such a joy to be around personally like aside from he seems so the, Yeah, he is. He really really is just such a joy and a light and uh somebody so great to have really deep serious conversations with but then also to just crack up about like stupid stuff with his laugh so, the best. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Going. uh-huh yeah so uh just personally to not have him around anymore was really heartbreaking Till later. Um, yeah yeah two. yeah and then he like trickled in every now and then they just like, <laughs> sprinkled him in um <laughs> Yeah, salt bay, <laughs> Alfie bay. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, it was tough. Um, but you know, it's I can't imagine writing a show that is called How to Get Away with Murder, where you know right. Rebecca in the first se- was a series regular, and and then at the end was killed of the first season. So like. We, that set the precedent of like oh oh shit who's next anyone can go yeah <laughs> anyone can go uh, i always like those posts on social media and it's like um the show how to get away with murder and then it's like shocked every time a dead body pops up and it's like a reaction gif or something like, yeah what yeah. are we expecting to happen <laughs> yeah and i feel bad for the, for the viewers because you get so attached to these characters and then you don't know they're gonna die it was when I got this tattoo of the five, it was like during season three. And then everyone was like, oh, you should get an X through Wes. And like, and like oh, that's <laughs> slowly more. get more X's. Yeah. Well, Asher, I guess you know. once Asher. Yeah. And then Frank and Bonnie. Oh, don't bring that up. Yeah. Girl. <laughs> oh, the worst. So. I do not know how Viola and Liza film that scene. I still yeah. can't. Still heartbreaking. Oh, my God. Oh, I don't want to touch on the series finale. 
um <laughs> kind of like season three still um how was it like getting like the tables turned on you guys not knowing who's going to be revealed safe at the end like um yeah it's did you guys like turn to the last page to see like who was going to be <laughs> like, yeah i did i mean i personally did I every would. time we got a script i was like shuffle 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 who is it oliver was revealed yeah. pretty early too so pretty early yes yeah, nice. second episode i was revealed to be safe uh so pete knew not yeah. to keep the <laughs> <laughs> don't make the Colliver fandom mad um yeah, no, uh, I, I, I would look every, every uh, page, um, and it was, it was tough. But I, I had been acting, or at that point, for about fifteen years professionally, and so you get used to the ups and downs of, of acting careers, and knowing like, oh, I have to look for a job again. Oh. Like after this show ends, I have to look in, for another job again. So, uh, yeah, I, I see these I, people every day anymore. <laughs> like, I know, I know. It's the craziest thing to cr you. We create these intense bonds so fast with our castmates, and then the show's over, and you then are spread out into the world. <laughs> right. oh uh, and that Starting is really, families. yeah, yeah. Getting rid of like, that's the hardest thing I think about this profession for me is is saying goodbye and there's always that hole in your heart after you say goodbye to all of these people that you've intensely been connected to yeah it's hard like through the tv to say goodbye i can't let alone yeah. in person Aren't, yeah yeah i think that um series finales are the hardest to watch because you can <sighs> see the actors saying not just the character it's not like really acting anymore yeah. like it's <laughs> No. Yeah, totally. Dang. Um, to touch on the fifteen years of acting, that's um mostly theater, right? And you're mm -hmm. different. Um, what was it like, um, going back between uh soft power and filming murder? Because that was kind of like the same. You were going back and forth, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. I will never do that again. Oh it all it was so physically and mentally and emotionally hard. Uh, part of the what I love about theater is that it's doing eight shows a week is so intense. And then on Sunday night, you get to hang out with your cast and like have a drink for the first time the whole week. And because you only get Mondays off. And <laughs> that I didn't, I had to hop on a plane immediately on Sundays to go shoot on Monday. Because <laughs> uh, they were trying to, to consolidate my shooting days to at least Monday and Tuesday, and then sometimes Wednesdays, um, during, while I was doing soft power. So I didn't get to, and then I'd have to leave, had to get away with murder to go back to do soft power. <laughs> And like, I didn't have any of that social time with my castmates and it like either, was of them, yeah. either of them. And it was super depressing. Um, I love soft power so much. I love the message. I love the music. Um, but it was, I took on, I didn't know my own limitations when I took it on and now I do. <laughs> Never again. Oh man. And then um, Here Lies Love in 2013, and then four years later, going back in 2017, uh, what was it like going back to the same role after uh, so long? It was, well, and it, it was also interesting because the 2016 election hadn't taken place uh, when, we, when, we first, when we first did it, and then when we went back and did it, it had all gone down. So it took on new meaning uh, because our show is about how Imelda Marcos stole billions of dollars from her country and was just so corrupt <laughs> and uh, made herself and people, but people still idolized her. And that's how she got away with a lot of stuff is she became this idol, but she was stealing from her own people. I don't know if that sounds familiar <laughs> in any way, <laughs> yeah, but uh, so it definitely felt after 2000, the election of 2016, it felt like, wow, are we seeing this play out? 
um, and then more, more recently where it felt like, are we going to, is, is he going to declare martial law uh, and then stay in power, which the Marcoses did, like they declared martial law so that, and then kept themselves as the president for years and years, and years which I was just like, if that isn't mirroring <laughs> what could potentially happen here, I don't know what. Kind of like how people think The Simpsons predicts <laughs> everything oh. with their oh, really? episodes. Yeah, like just <laughs> obscure stuff that somehow has, that you would never think would happen, but. That's brilliant. Here we are. And then um, recently, Over the Moon on Netflix, um, how was that? just doing like a voice um for a character not really having yeah any, or it's i mean no it was thrilling for me i love animated movies and uh to be a part of one and then to watch it back and to see what the what they drew to match my voice uh <laughs> was really like incredible um and to, like i mean philippa sue come on <laughs> that's my go-to Hamilton treadmill soundtrack. <laughs> oh yeah, work, 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 get the mind and work. Yeah, oh, so good. Did you so that was ever record with her, like in the same? No, we recorded on separate. different. Like, yeah, we recorded separately. Um, but we're, I'm actually really good friends with her because we did, when she, uh, when they were doing the about to start the workshop for Amelie, uh. I had auditioned for one of the very early workshops and we had this long, I had this long work session with her where we did a movement workshop where I had to like carry her oh. and then like, she like walked on my back and then we did all of this crazy stuff and that bonded us. <laughs> real the quick. Real quick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, ever since then, uh, you know, I went to see her in when she was in Great Comet and was like, holy shit, who, like, I had no idea. You're my friend. <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy I know you. <laughs> uh, and of course, Hamilton, and I've just been a fan, but uh, I got to know her personally through that little workshop. Are you excited for any upcoming movies on demand? Or... Oh, that are, that are being released soon? Yeah. I still haven't seen Minari, which I'm super oh, excited about. So good. Oh, oh really? It's really good. Okay, I'm gonna watch that this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, have you, you know, seen there's Raya there... yet? no, I haven't seen. I, haven't I was going either. to, but then I like I saw that I had I have Disney Plus, but then I was like, I'm do I have thirty dollars? <laughs> Yeah, so I might just wait until uh, it comes out with my <laughs> with my Disney Plus subscription. You're uh, yeah, but there's there's uh, uh, some TV shows that the second season, the new seasons, I'm excited about coming out. I loved Russian Doll on Netflix. Isn't it so good? It's so. I was not expecting to like it that much, or like yeah, be into it as much, but. I'm so intrigued by what the hell is going on. <laughs> and like a season two, like what will more people like get this Groundhog Day thing going on? And yeah. She has to yeah. help them. Or... Yeah. Yeah. That uh, I love Shrill on Hulu with AD oh. Bryant. Um, uh, what else? Yeah. Those are the two that pop pop into my head. And um, um, Annie yeah. Murphy from Schitt's Creek is going to be on. Uh, I Russian know. Doll, so that. So exciting um but i am excited to go to a theater to see a movie at some point again <laughs> in the future after i get my vaccine um yeah just that at a theater <laughs> it, it really is like it's seeing it on a huge screen where you know the the surround sound and and um it's pitch black it's you really do get to escape everyone's reactions bit. With yeah it's like a little yeah yeah oh man yeah i'm not about to pay 30 dollars for that <laughs> Disney. like i want to watch we'll, it but yeah we'll see it soon enough i bought all this podcast stuff <laughs> i have to <laughs> wait for that stimulus check yeah i know oh man where are we at mm -mm. my bad there's a pause no, <laughs> go for it go for it look through 
I feel like I should have had the trophy down here. <laughs> we can hold our hold it in our minds. I can envision it. On my leg as a tattoo. <laughs> oh man. I haven't brought up Viola yet, so I think maybe we should of bring course up the first time meeting her or <laughs> a scene together or Oh yeah. No, I mean uh I the first time I saw her was in doubt and mm -hmm. I was just blown away. Uh completely captivated by her um and uh the first time i worked with her it was interesting because i had to prepare myself mentally before i went in uh because you know i'm a i'm an act, i'm a professional <laughs> <laughs> right. so i thought i i don't really clearly remember the first time of working with her because i was hyper focused on what i was doing as an actor because i wanted to be professional and especially level, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I, and you know, like that, that must be a lot of energy for her to deal with when uh, so many people are fans of her and they get it, they get excited and then around her. And she, you know, I know a little on a, on a smaller scale what that's like, but you absorb all of that when it's around you. And so I wanted to maintain my own energy uh, around her. Uh, listen, when I w one of my first run-ins in New York City uh, was uh, in the West Village. I was walking down the small side street and I saw this woman, you know, nobody else was on the street with us. This woman with flowing black clothes and long braids walking towards me. And as she got closer, I realized it was Janet Jackson. Oh and it was just God. she and I on the same sidewalk. And we, I passed by her and she smiled at me and I instantly started tearing. And then she, she could see that I was tearing up and she her smile changed to like actually a little bit like, uh oh, like a braid. And oh. so I didn't, and then I was like, oh no, I'm affecting her negatively. So I didn't say any anything to her and I just kept walking past her. Because oh. uh, I realized the effect that my um, overwhelming response was having on her. And that was the first time I was like, oh, shit she probably gets this she's probably going to turn the corner and get this again from somebody else like that could have been the last normal street she walked down to yeah, wow, yeah. Never thought about. Wow. and i just it was like man that sucks that really like is must be hard and so ever since that moment i like was then when so when i like met viola i was like you know what, I'm going to control myself and not say I'm not. And I never said anything to her about being a fan or loving her work because she gets it. She she already gets it every time she leaves her house. A million times, yeah. Yeah, so I don't need to be another person like bombarding her. Um, like, she knows that you're a fan. <laughs> yeah, she probably knows. She knows, <laughs> she knows she's a shit. <laughs> Dang, I've never thought about, like, that's a good way to put it like yeah can you imagine she, like we, the moment you leave your house it's like like 10 people are waiting to tell you like <laughs> like freak out to freak out in your face <laughs> like the whole britney thing and yeah Paris and it's tough um yeah so but but actually working on set with her was like a master class because you realize the economy of her acting where she does so little but says so much through through that like she really there's there's an opening that she she allows the camera and the other actors to affect her at a such a deep level there's no there's no artifice that it's being filtered through uh and that as it, watching that for 6 years as an actor i just was such a blessing that's i can't <laughs> i was freaking out at paley center <laughs> just saying yeah six years working yeah oh, it's incredible and she's also just the nicest the nicest most down-to-earth real person yeah i can get that from her interviews and always bringing up um julius and her daughter and mm -hmm. I love the accent she does, or the little voice she does for her husband. If you <laughs> so funny. Oh, <laughs> oh man, did you have a um, 
favorite set or anything or i really missed oliver's apartment after oh. they moved out i just you know that was the you first picked the house <laughs> for it's everyone. true i know i know i know but i got so comfortable in that apartment for those three years that we were there uh that i i just loved it so much uh it just because it was so familiar um i loved uh kaplan and gold because it was so sexy and it was so beautiful (laughs) yeah it was really really like you felt like you were in a high-powered office when you were there was it multiple um it was multiple it was multiple offices (laughs) um and i'll tell you a little trick uh you want to hear something crazy they so season four when we worked at kaplan and gold uh and the whole uh night x of simon getting shot uh happened so when i let walked out of the party into the elevator um they (laughs) yeah i walked into the elevator that elevator didn't go anywhere it just closed like the doors and so they and then they were shooting my reaction like talking to myself in the elevator but while i was talking to myself they completely changed around the office on the x on the exterior to where simon was laying and got shot and changed the lighting and i walked out and it was as if i was on a different floor but it was the exact same spot darker and oh my darker God. yeah and and simon was laying there in a pool of blood <laughs> and you so, scream that yeah oh my god that's yeah. really cool i'm gonna watch it yeah. after this now <laughs> yeah it did the elevator didn't go anywhere but the i mean the the crew was so incredible on how to get away with murder they worked miracles um and that's one of those miracles magic that they worked uh, was that moment that's so cool yeah like a quick change how people do those quick change mm-hmm. vegas acts it's like it's yeah like whole yeah set. imagine that but it's an entire set that they have to like all rush in switch around and then like Blood, <laughs> lay down but, <laughs> gun. yeah yeah did you um have any theories for, or um did you find out pretty early on who was going to be or like who shot Simon or the whole Simon thing or um uh try to think back about that what because that was season four um yeah I think we there was a little bit of a uh maybe one or two episodes where we didn't know who got shot um but then it wasn't as long as season three that we we didn't know um, but yeah, I think we, f- we found out pretty, pretty early on that it was going to be Simon. The chair. <laughs> that comes I know. Chair. <laughs> That's Talk about luck. bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> he got the worst luck out of, oh my God. Seriously. And then Michaela calling deportation. Yeah. I mean, she was like savage. Mm. Just like so crazy because he was just the sweetest person on earth. Um, but Michaela was really turned out to be a really terrible human being. Oh my God. <laughs> that final shot of Michaela, or one of the final, with her trying to call Laurel mm-hmm. after Oliver yells at her, and it should have been you. And she's just like completely alone now. Like after. Yeah. That, I mean, again. she, cut, yeah, she cut off like oh, all man. of it. You know, she deceived, she chose herself in the end like she she said many times during the series and uh she she chose herself for better or worse i mean i also love that they showed her you know being sworn in as some sort of judge Judge, yeah Yeah, but she did not have any ongoing relationship with with anyone not at the funeral or yeah Okay, I kind of want to bring up the series finale now, but <laughs> I didn't bring any tissues. <laughs> um, no, nah, I'm good. I'll be good. Um, how was it with like the old age makeup and it was like it was perfect. intense. 
uh, yeah, the, we went in and it took like almost three hours. They put a the cast put a cast over our whole face. Oh my um, yeah, and the last oh, yeah, I think you posted a video like the time yeah, lapse or something. Time lapse video. Um, but it took like that was three hours. You know, the time lapse makes it look fast, but it was three hours sitting in a chair while they cemented over your face. And towards the end, it was like I had to consciously tell myself take Give deep breaths oh yeah because it is claustrophobic because you can't see um you can barely breathe um just through the nose it was open or? just through the nose like uh, it was open did you have any headphones in or are they uh they had music playing but they were also i think they yeah, had they cast over our ears too so like everything was muffled as well <laughs> no music <laughs> for you Never yeah mind. Oh, so it was it was scary, but uh, you know it the the result was incredible. <laughs> they looked really good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then um, with Alfred coming back as Christopher, um, what was it like having him on set again? And it was just the best. It was just the best. If if I lived in the same city as Alfie, <laughs> I would be asking him to get coffee every week because every week. he's just the most open the greatest guy to hang out with he's a great he's a great listener he's a great talker he's like just so awesome uh so it was great to have him back and also to tie up the loose ends of the story that like how it began did you like that that he was playing older christopher or did you only see wes still or no, I love that he was playing older Christopher. Uh, I think it was it was so emotional to to see it come full cir full circle. It did right make me like, and... yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, those that feeling of watching that pilot, uh, I still remember like so vividly, and that was the beginning of my life completely changing. <laughs> So uh, to see that then be featured at the very end of the last episode ever uh, was super special. I, <laughs> I just hope I just hope Christopher has has an easier journey than Wes did. <laughs> right. No. You know. Oh my God. Um. How do you think? Do you have any um little fan theory or cast theory for how? you think um laurel got back in touch with annalise to uh just like in your mind like how do you think that all went down yeah i don't i'm not sure i think it was probably through tegan um tegan taking jorge out like that <laughs> yeah yeah but like, you know, I don't think Laurel, I think Laurel was okay with her dad getting shanked <laughs> in prison um, because he was such a terrible guy. Uh, so I think it somehow was through, uh, you know, Tegan that they, they had a, a, a reconciliation and a, um, and a meeting. Uh, yeah. And, you know, Laurel probably knew that Annalise and Wes were so close. Uh, so she couldn't keep him. Yeah. Yeah. She couldn't keep Christopher from Annalise. Okay. Yeah. And it's such an intense, you know, trauma. Trauma is a terrible thing, but it binds people together. Uh, you know, much in the, I feel like those the the law students were were bound together by all of the trauma they endured um during i the... feel like that was like a big part for laurel to heal too like to do that for her son and for him yeah, and... totally oh. and do you have any um thoughts in your head what happened between connor and oliver like from when he gets out of jail to <laughs> Old I funeral looking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. I think that they went their separate ways for a few years. Mm -hmm. um, I think they needed to find themselves individually. 
I think they used each other. It was a very codependent relationship and it was, you know, there was love there, but it was unhealthy. Um, they, they leaned on each other in ways that was, that were very unhealthy. And I think they had to, they probably did separate for at least like at least five years, if not more. Um, cause I think that, uh, Connor had to find himself after he got out of prison. <laughs> In prison. Uh, or yeah and in prison um so i think that they separated and then they realized they probably re i think they reconnected about eight years later you know three years after connor got out uh and uh and then realized that there was there was actual love there not just codependence <laughs> and trauma, yeah. yeah yeah like um Connor says, like, there's nothing keeping us together except um, trauma, trauma murder. and murder, death. And yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my God. That scene with um, Connor giving the divorce papers to, <sighs> I don't know how you did that little. <laughs> oh, well, because, I yeah, it was, I mean, it was such an emotional time yeah, in like general. We were winding, yeah, it was, we were winding down shooting, saying our goodbyes to the show, to each other. You know, we, were, we weren't going to ever be in this position again. Um, and it, I, it just was all like automatic. It was all like it didn't feel like I was consciously doing anything in that moment. Right. Um, although I will say that like I've, I've really personally like I like stories about two individuals who are complicated that are trying to make love work because i think that's life i think it's really hard to to uh to make love work because we all have so much baggage that we come with that we don't face until we meet somebody else and we're trying to let them in and then all all of the shit hits the fan oh. because uh yeah and and I, so portraying that for six years was really something that i was interested in because it's complicated relationships are so complicated yeah like you said it's not part of acting anymore or once the series finales and yeah in general like god damn. Yeah. and then i have one more fan question from my friend Sarah and oh, hi Sarah. She's watching. She helped me practice last night. Oh, yay. Um, she says, "Is there anything that you still want to try new with your career that you haven't done yet?" Or, um, yeah, I there's. I mean, I in grad school I studied so many of the the classic plays that I would love to. Get. I love. Um, you know, farcical uh, Oscar Wilde. Uh, um, I would love to be in the uh, importance of being earnest. Um, I, you know, I'd love to play uh, uh, Hal and Henry, uh, Henry Fourth Part One uh, with Shakespeare. Um, I played Juliet once in Romeo and Juliet, and I loved that so much. Uh, so, you know, playing a role that was originally written for a woman, I think would be interesting as well. Um, and I am writing my show, No Rice, with- uh, oh, I have heard, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, and that's, I have so much I wanna say about that because it it is like, yeah, I just I can't, but I'm I don't know what I'm allowed to say, but like it's it's happening, and uh, there's so many crazy exciting people who are attached to it. Girl. <laughs> and that's all I will say. I can stop are... the recording. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to stop the recording. No, I meant like I can stop and. Oh yeah. Tell no. me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just say that there are crazy amazing people attached okay <laughs> oh my gosh oh, I forgot. No. <laughs> so yeah that's i mean i'd love to 
to to write more of doing what I'm doing right now, developing my show with my two friends. Um, and I would also like to champion new Asian American writers as well. Mm. So, yeah. God damn. <laughs> What was I gonna? That was um what that little cryptic tweet was about, probably. Yeah, no <laughs> rice or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, like, I deleted it because I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I, yeah, yeah. Everyone was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I think that's all I have. <laughs> oh, no. I don't want to keep it you. Was- it was so great talking to you. It was so fun. I was so nervous all night. And... You were incredible. And <sighs> also, like, if you ever, like, we appreciated you so much for six years because you were so supportive of our show and us individually. So, like, you don't have to worry about, like, interviewing us because we yeah. love you so much. <laughs> That's what I was doing. Like, Connor is the first good to have a first guest because yeah like oh so easy much, then. <laughs> um, i do have a really i'm surprised with how many people i've gotten so far so i probably have like nine other people so far i'm yeah. so excited yeah, <laughs> i'm yeah. gonna run out of post it notes <laughs> oh that's cute i need to get a teleprompter or something <laughs> oh, man. well just trust that you have all of the knowledge of the show inside of you. You know it better than anyone else, including those of us who are in it. <laughs> right? You're like, when you were like trying to remember what season finale is which, I'm like, come I'm like, on. Just, I can, I'll just act here. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, thank you so much, though, for of course, always being amazing to me <laughs> and you uh for doing this podcast and, and keeping our little our little murder show alive <laughs> right i want to keep the excitement like i hope people are excited every or whenever i have a schedule to, yeah. i hope like they look forward to it well and it's incredible because it's still people are still discovering it so like right i feel like it's gonna be our it's gonna live like a long you know like, a, a cult following rebirth right. In like, revival yeah. yeah i know on disney plus for 30 dollars <laughs> no no okay. disney plus will have to expand their horizons to have how to get away with murder <laughs> <laughs> adult section or yeah <laughs> maybe <laughs> oh man maybe we can put together a one year anniversary <laughs> that would be great with yeah. everybody yeah that would be great i have to buy like a bigger zoom plan i think if i have more than (laughs) oh really yeah i think it's it cuts off 40 minutes if you have more than three people oh wow that's how they get you that's how they monetize they got i was i was wondering how they would monetize zoom right how are they (laughs) make money (laughs) yeah because it's free that would be fun though if to put like a one-year anniversary finale Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> uh, any other plans today uh no i'm gonna it's beautiful here so it's like i mean it's gonna get up to the high 70s so i'm gonna go Oof. for a run um yeah take wilbur out yeah take wilbur <laughs> out just try to enjoy some of this warm weather before it gets cold again i think it's gonna get cold again i think it's supposed to snow tomorrow here <laughs> i'm over it <laughs> i bet like 50 yeah, but... today and then snow tomorrow and Oof. Mm. I will. <laughs> we'll hang in there I will. It'll... spring is on the way it's it's already here in atlanta time change tonight too i know we lose an hour mm. all right niles but we just had a good hour of talk yes so. <laughs> yes this will be uh, an hour to remember <laughs> hey. oh man okay <laughs> I will All right. Keep Thanks, Miles. Longer. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for coming on again. <laughs> yeah, anytime. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye. You. Bye.